So, Jamie, uh, we have had some references to Sky Advantage, but... Um, Sky Advance, we just need to click that Sky one up. Advance. Sky Advance? Sky Advance, oh. but anyway. Sky Advance, that's our first, first, first learning. Disagreement, our first disagreement. Our first learning? Yeah, our first okay. Learning. Sky Advance. Um, so just um, imagine we are about to uh, arrive at Sky HQ and we're in the lift and you're giving me a quick elevator pitch as to what exactly is Sky Advance, just to get everyone up to speed, not least in my case on the branding. So firstly, before we do that, we've got to assume that before someone's come in the building, they don't know who Sky is. So just for, just for a tiny bit of context, uh, Sky is a European uh, pay TV uh, broadcast company, uh, broadcasting over satellite and OTT, operating in five countries, UK, Ireland, Italy, Germany and Austria. I've been bad if I got that wrong. Uh, we are, it, what's very different about Sky to potentially the US market is we're vertically integrated. And by that I mean uh, we are a platform, we are content owners, but we're also a sales house. So we represent not just Sky wholly owned channels, uh, we represent third party channels, so the likes of NBCU, Discovery, Viacom, Channel 5, etc. Um, so I'm in the lift now, you know where you are. We're going up. Uh, the, what Sky Advance is all about is really leveraging our unique set-top box data capability. Uh, so Justin mentioned in the, in the previous talk that we have uh, a viewing panel. Uh, publicly, we talked a few years ago about the fact that we had a 500,000 home panel. And then more recently, last autumn, when we launched Sky Advance into the test and learn phase, we talked about the fact that we have uh, a 3 million home panel. Uh, the ambition, the desire for Sky Advance is all about bringing down the barriers between uh, TV and digital. So if you like, you think about that three million home panel, second by second viewing for every single channel, program, spot, sponsorship and promotional ident that is broadcast and viewed on the Sky platform. And then you think about all of Sky's other multiple touch points with its consumers, whether it be uh, customers accessing content on Sky Go, Sky Sports App, Sky News App. Uh, we have this ability inbuilt in our system now with that data to serve ads sequentially from TV into digital. Someone's seen a TV ad, we now show them a different creative act execution in the digital environment, either deterministically, i.e. to that three million home panel, or probabilistically, easy for me to say, uh, modelled out sort of lookalike data into the open uh, ecosystem, if you like, using our uh, third party DSP uh, called DataZoo. Cool. Excellent stuff. So from a technical point of view, I'd just like to sort of drill down into a few aspects of it just so we understand, yeah, but obviously not IP threatening levels of detail, but just in terms of how you're actually um, building the system and what it can and can't do. So from a technical point of view, how exactly are you linking your set-top box data to what is going on on other devices? I mean, not just what's going on with Sky apps, but generally, how are you linking the data together? Yeah, so each, each Sky customer has a, a Sky ID, a household ID, and then linked to each of our customer accounts uh, because they have to, uh, or they want to, access our content on these devices. We append permitted devices. So you, you build up a profile of each, of each household, if you like, by device. Uh, and then you can think about how you can use either our own data sets or indeed third-party data sets, so whether that be... Uh, Tapad, Drawbridge, or any of the other long list of suppliers out there to really you know, uh, match devices and households to one IP address or one, to, to, to the devices. Uh, and then that enables us to join that seamless sequential uh, advertising capability. And do you know more about, potentially, about your own Sky Broadband customers because you're providing their wider service, or is, it, is that not part of the... No, it's, it's not about the broadband instance, it's about the, the access to content and the device that, that you access your content on. So it's, you know, it, it's, it doesn't only take into account in-home viewing. Mm. So whether you're on the go, or whether you're out and about via the Wi-Fi network, whatever it may be, uh, the ads can be served in, in, in all of those environments. Mm. I was involved about a decade ago in the US with building one of the first addressable systems. It always struck me that the ability to serve sequentially and also to cap frequency were almost as important, if not more, than the addressability angle, I thought, in terms of the attractiveness of the system. So in terms of how that works, um, are you able to feed into that equation because you've got the set-top box data, what's going on on other channels? So if I'm buying an ad and I'm also running it on ITV, for example, are you able to factor that into the equation to know how many times I saw it on ITV and therefore 
make sure that that's part of the overall picture, or is this just happening within the sky silo, as it were, of channels? So it's, it's, it's viewing to the sky platform irrespective of channel. Mm. So, you know, if you think about Sky Advance as a product, it's one of a suite of tools that we offer. So if you think about the areas that Sky's invested in, in the last couple of years, you, you've heard over the last couple of days about Sky AdSmart, which is all about addressable TV. Uh, we've, we've talked uh, a couple of days ago about our analytics and data capabilities uh, and how we are looking to add value, if you like, and service the whole campaign lifecycle and not just the uh, execution. Mm. Uh, and this uh, is the, the third real major driver for us, really bringing the power back to the brand and the, and the agency with this relatively unique insight. Mm. And in a similar vein, in terms of when you are moving outside the set-top box into the online world. In terms of the advertiser options, in terms of if I'm saying, okay, I know how many times this person has seen the ad on the, on the set-top box, I now want to complement that with my media strategy online. Is that limited to buying Sky properties? Or how, how, if, if not, how are you yeah. guiding that whole system? Because obviously it's a moving from the set-top box, which is very much a walled garden, to the massive online world is, is quite a leap. I yeah. So ab about 12 months ago, we took a strategic stake in a demand-side platform called DataZoo, which is one of the few fraud-free DSPs that are out there, uh, i.e. not non-human mm. fraudulent traffic. Uh, and uh, they act as our, our demand-side platform for, uh, for advertisers. And so we pass aggregated anonymized data sets we match on a third-party platform, and then they go out and find those over the open ecosystem, either through our own private marketplaces, and we've signed deals with publishers, you know, digital radio, you know, all, you know the whole range of, of, of uh, platforms and sites, if you like, uh, either through those private marketplaces or through the open exchange. So it's not just about you know experiencing or serving rather the ads on the Sky Estate. It's out in the in the full open ecosystem. Mm. And and in terms of the advertising doing that, how how what's their point of contact for making those, those buys? If you see what I mean. So they're coming to you to use the system. Are you passing them on to other people if they want to buy? Other platforms. So, so DataZoo do that for us. Okay. So you know we have uh, you know generally you know whether it be Sky AdSmart or Sky Advance, the dynamic and the relationship between Sky and its partners, agencies or brands, has changed and evolved massively over the last three or so years. You know where you are sharing data, albeit aggregated, anonymised. You know you move your conversation further up the, the the planning cycle, and you end up having much more detailed. Uh, conversations, much more relevant conversations about what the KPI is, you know, what the overall campaign uh, mm. effectiveness mod, um, uh, position is. And so uh, for us, it's really changing the dynamic of the business. So the conversations, both on AdSmart and Advance, are meaning that, you know, we are getting deeply embedded in the, in the campaign strategy at a much earlier stage. Okay. Now, at Sky IQ have been spoken at a number of media televents over the last few years, very much talking about the idea of customers bringing their own databases to in, in Sky IQ where they could uh, fuse them together and create effectively you know, biographics and advanced RI products. In, in the new way in which you're organised, how, how does that ability fold into Sky Advance? Is that also an opportunity that people could put their own data sets into you know, moving beyond what everyone could refer to as the standard demographics into, you know, effectively bi biographics or viewographics? So we've been working with uh, advertisers directly and via their agencies probably for the last two or three years. And uh, probably the most well-known case study talked about in the UK is Argos, where we are working with Argos as an as a online retailer to uh, match our two data sets to really create a a panel for them, which is some 270,000 households, where they can really understand the correlations between their customers' purchasing behaviours and, uh, and, and viewing on the Sky platform. And so for us, we, we offer a whole array of uh, opportunities for an advertiser, whether it be offering uh, Sky Advance as a targeting capability using their own data or indeed our data, or building deep uh, integrated data partnerships with brands and businesses like, um, uh, like Argos, et cetera. So you know, if, you, if you think about our investment in this area, you know, we're building tools and services, we're building full 
system-to-system -system integrations for brands and advertisers, and as well, system-to-system -system integrations for agencies. So that, you know, this is just one area of opportunity that we offer brands. You know, it goes on that, that full continuum. Mm. Now, I think the system was announced last October and went live January this year. So, if I recall correctly. So, it's still early days, but interestingly, yesterday we had a presentation from Stefan Jansen and Mindshare, who actually referenced he'd already, I think for two of his clients, had used uh, the Sky Advanced system. And the phrase he used was promising. Um, obviously, you, you're probably not drowning in um, our um, sort of effectiveness research data at the moment, but what are the early indications into you know, the sorts of clients that have been using it and what are they finding in terms of the, the, the impact of the system on their bottom line? So, we, so we've been running at a relatively low level to date, so we, we're still very much in the test and learn phase. So we've been, as you say, since January, been running campaigns. Now, over that period, we've run about 100 or so different campaigns. So a reasonable volume of campaigns. And part of that has been proving that the, the piping and the integrations work. Part of that has been proving the relationships or private marketplaces we have with other pub publishers are giving us the right quality of content, we're getting the right view through rates and all of that sort of thing. But in terms of brands, it's been really those data enabled brands that have really tried to, 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 to grab this opportunity the most. And so I'm just sort of thinking of, of specific brands. So. Uh, uh, a, a cinema campaign uh, outperformed its target and competitive benchmark by just over, or just under 100%, so it's about 96%. Uh, and an online gra uh, gaming brand, gambling brand, achieved a 90% growth in, a, in awareness uh, on the Sky Advance um, uh, campaign versus the control group. When we looked at that, or Nielsen looked at that versus their benchmarks, that's in the top decile of, of campaign performance. So, you know, just from very small acorn, acorns, we're starting to see some really promising signs. You know, in aggregate across all of the campaigns, the, you know, a, a very clunky measure, but it gives us an indication the click through rate in digital environments has increased versus the mean at 60%. Mm. So, we're seeing good in indications. We're starting to transition now to. Uh, you know, a few more campaigns on a weekly, monthly basis. I would anticipate moving to a full open market launch at uh, some point in the early part of next year, maybe mid next year. Um, but really for us, it's really about test and learn, really about proving the, the efficacy of another product that we've brought to market that really innovates. So you might be able to be back next year with some case studies. Of I think they'll be bored of me by then. <laughs> You'll be able to show them to the industry. Um, I'd just like to widen it out a bit to see if anyone's got any questions for Jamie as he's here about how the system works or any of the implications of it, because I know it's a topic that's been referred to quite a few times over the last couple of days, which is the, the sequencing across screens. I think um, there's a hand there. Sorry, thank you. Traditional business, if you like, then you've got your advanced stuff. Is it possible to sort of talk to or quantify the ha if you've had a halo effect on your sort of traditional business because of the advanced stuff you're doing, or are they still deemed separate by the marketplace? Um, I guess you know, the, the way that we look at the, the investment that we've made over the last five years is if we can build stronger relationships with brands and agencies, that will make us more likely to be partner of choice. You know, when you think about um, AdSmart as a product or proposition, we had one sole aim for, for that addressable TV platform, which was to make TV more relevant to more brands. And something like 74% um, of the brands active on the platform are either new to TV or new to Sky. So that's growing the overall TV market overall. And more and more of those are starting to transition into cross-platform campaigns. You know, th there have been many instances where advertisers and their agencies have changed their planning, uh, their, their, their planning strategies as a result of the data enablement that we're bringing to the total sort of uh, campaign stack. But the one thing I would say, though, more than anything else, is that we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that the vast majority of advertisers will still want to do the sorts of things that they do today. So big brand building, fame building TV campaigns as they do today. You know, using digital to drive, you know, acquisition and things like that as they do today. But this just gives, these products give brands and agency more tools in their armory, more flexibility and more option optionality. There's a, a question there. Oh, oh, oh hi. Yeah, hi. Can you hear me? 
Yeah. Yes. My question is that, as far as I understood, is uh, you use the DSP, you use the data sheet, the DSP to control your online campaigns. You use your own technology on Sky Ad Smart to, you, to control the set of box campaigns. But my question is here is, uh, do you get or are you working on the dream of uh, every marketer to get the, uh, to be able to deliver a campaign that means 100% multi-screen so you can control the frequency all over the, the devices, all over the uh, audiovisual campaigns that you're managing and uh, to be able not to work on a silo and uh, plug X amount of impressions on the set of box, X amount of impressions on the OTT and so on. So can you deliver the dream of 100% efficiency across all screens? I think that was the question, not, not just the set-top box. Yeah, I mean, so the beauty of, of having a stack that works across TV and digital is that you can send campaigns both ways. So you can use device IDs and aggregated and anonymized data sets to, to power into, into the TV ecosystem via, via Sky and Smart. So that might be unfulfilled baskets, you know, those sort of things in, in, on shopping sites, or indeed the other way around. I think that's mm. the question. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, I'll Hi. come to you. <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, in your data strategy, are you looking at packaging up your data and uh, selling that independent of your content um, so that advertisers could buy anonymized data and use that across other inventory? Um, so we are not a data business, no. Uh, we do, obviously, when we're, we're enabling uh, advertisers and agencies to buy off platform, they are using our data to do so, but that is via a, a secure um, uh, sort of integration third-party platform match. But we're, we're not in the business of just selling our data as a package, no. So there's a question lady there. Um, I'll speak up. Just shout. No. <laughs> um, oh, there you go. Um, so we've heard a lot over the last couple of days about the cross-channel and you were talking specifically about the sequencing and my question was, uh, do you have an indication on the additional value that the sequencing adds on top of the uh, cross-channel targeting? Uh, I don't think we have any uh, sort of material numbers to prove out that. I think really for us though, it's been about you know, enabling more creativity you know, launching the campaign on TV and se sending different messages relevant to the device or platform as part of that sequence. So launching the brand on TV or wherever you might normally do it, additional information on your tablet, long form or short form, and then call to actions in, in, in different environments. Much as you would intend to do through your campaign plan, because when you think about it, you know, just taking a step back, if you think about a plan, whether it be a creative plan or a media plan, it's a single, it's a single plan. But when you, you know, inevitably when you drop down into execution, whether it be because of you know, people, technology or currency, you end up transacting that plan in isolation. And this is just one small step along the journey to, to, to bring down the barriers between media and bring more, more flexibility. Just expanding on that question, do you, can you envisage that the availability of this system may influence creatives to make the use of it by creating more multi-part campaigns because they... I mean, going back to when I was a kid, you had the gold, the gold blend ads, which told a little story across six years when they were released. But uh, can you imagine more soap opera type? Possibly. Uh, I, you know, it, it, yeah, it, it's amazing. You know, when you when you think about the, the the journey that we've been on already, you know, we've we've started doing some trials on dynamic creative optimization in our digital formats as a result of TV consumption. Easy for me to say, but you know, try, trying to work out how we serve the right creative in digital formats and TV formats or IP TV formats, you know, in a way that really gives, you know, instead of having, uh, I think the biggest campaign we've, uh, in terms of number of creative that we've sold on TV is 140, 140 different pieces of creative aligned to one, one brand. Uh, but in that instance, you get into thousands. What was driving the 140? Is it it was, demographics? Uh, it, it, was a, it was a car manufacturer, it was about location and retailer, it was about okay. uh, affluence and it was about model preference. So when you think about that matrix yeah. for car dealer, you, know, it, you can see how complex it gets quite quickly. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I think we'd better um, wrap up at that point. Again, I'm sure it's something we'll be discussing over lunch, but uh, thanks to Jamie for uh, taking the time to join us in the fireside. <laughs>